Today we begin a new series titled "God in the Time of Challenge." We will be looking into the midnight hour of our lives. The midnight hour is a time of challenge and trouble. Everyone will go through tribulations and challenges. The midnight hour is when you are abandoned by friends and family when you need them the most. The time when everything isn't going well as normal. But our Lord, the God of Israel. Who neither sleeps nor slumber will always abide with us as long as we abide in Him. This is GRM Gospel Revelation Ministry. Welcome to Gospel Revelation Ministry this Monday, the thirteenth of June, twenty twenty-two. We focus on spreading the word of God. Addressing worldly topics biblically, you can learn more about this ministry at grministry.org. I am your host, Yinka Martins, and this ministry's pastor is Pastor Joshua Ajewole. Good day, brethren. Today, the word of encouragement is the midnight hour the midnight hour of our life, the midnight hour. Our passage today is 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 1 to 18. 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 1 to 18. It reads, And Ahab said to Jezebel, All that Elijah had done, also how he had executed all the prophets with a sword, then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more or so, if I did not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, he arose and ran for his life, and went to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left the servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, and came and sat under a broom tree, and he prayed that he might die, and said, it is enough. Now, Lord, take my life, for I am no better than my father's. Then as he lay and slept under a broom tree, suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. Then he looked, and there was by his head was a cake baked on coals and a jar of water. So he had and drank and lay down again. And the angel of the Lord came back the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat because the journey is too great for you. So he arose and ate and drank, and he went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights as far as Oreb, the mountain of God. And there he went into a cave, and spent the night in that place. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? So he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel has forsaken your covenant, tore down your altars, and killed your prophets with a sword. I alone am left, and the seek to take my life. Then he said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks into pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a small, still voice. So it was, when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face into his mantle and went and stood in the entrance of the cave. Suddenly, a voice came to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts, because the children of Israel has forsaken your covenant, tore down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left. And they seek to take my life. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you arrive, anoint Azar as king of Syria. Also you should anoint Jehu, the son of Nishim, as king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Saphite, of abel Meholah, you should anoint as prophet in your place. And it should be that whoever escaped the sword of Israel, Jehu will kill. And whoever escaped the sword of Jehu, Elisha will kill. The last verse. 
Yet I have reserved 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed to Bahar, and every mouth has not kissed him. The midnight hour is the time of trouble. It is time of crisis. Every human being, every Christian, we go it. There's no escape. Because the Bible says the day of man is full of decay and full of trouble. The midnight hour is time that you are lonely. The midnight hour is time that friends turn their back against you. The midnight hour is when even the family abandon you. You can see the passage that we read. If we move back a little bit, Elijah the prophet in First King chapter 18, chapter 17, he was riding high. He would challenge the prophet of Bath, over 400 of them. He defeated them. He brought fire from heaven. He said there will not be rain for three and a half years. There was no rain. He commanded to come. He was there. But first King chapter 19, Jezebel, the wife of King Heab, sent messenger to prophet Elijah and said, by this time tomorrow, your head will not be on your neck. And the man of God started to panic. The midnight hour came and the prophet of God started to run from pillar to pole. The midnight hour. It's a time of trouble. A time that our faith is challenged. A time that we will doubt our Christianity. The time that people may lose hope. The midnight hour. Book of Psalm 30, verse 5 says, For his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for life. Weeping may endure in the night, but joy come in the morning, the midnight hour of our time. Talk about Elijah. Now let's look at David. In the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 15. Verse 13 to 18, paraphrasing. Absalom raised people of Israel against David. David fled Jerusalem in barefooted, walking and crying the midnight hour of King David. Many of servants, including Ayatophel, let him enjoy the Absalom, the midnight hour of David. The midnight hour of Peter the Apostle. Peter that Jesus Christ upon the statement, I build my church, which gate of hell will not prevail. But when the midnight hour of Peter came, in the book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 69 to 75, he denied Jesus three times. And after denying Jesus three times, the cock crows. And he wept bitterly. The midnight hour. The midnight hour in our marriage. When husband and wife do not understand each other. When they cannot communicate. When everything every other people do is negative. The midnight hour. Over our children. When we talk to them, they will say they don't understand what we are saying. You ask them to do A, they do B. The midnight hour. The midnight hour, there's no escape for Christian. There's no escape for human being. But the way we stand in the time of midnight hour, that will determine the outcome. The way we stand when there's trouble, that will determine our faith, our standing with the Lord, our focus. We determine the outcome. That's why David was so worried. In the book of Psalm 3, verse 1 and 2, he says, Lord, how dead have we Christ who have troubled me? Many are they who rise up against me, and many are they who say to me, There is no help for him in the Lord. 
There is no help for him in the Lord. The midnight hour is a time of loneliness. It's a time that we doubt our being. We doubt our soul. Midnight hour. In the book of Psalm 42, verse 3. Say, my tear has been my food day and night. Why they are continually say to me, we are is your God. We are there continually said to you and me, we are is our God. It's a time that people will mock us. It's a time that people will say it's done with them. But our God never sleep. Our faith must stand. Our faith must be in the Lord. In the midnight hour, it's time we need to humble ourselves. Is it time to seek the face of God? In the passage that we had, humbleness is very important. You see, as David was going out of Jerusalem during the Absalom riot, and then the book of 2 Samuel chapter 16, verse 5 to 10, I'm paraphrasing. A family of Saul, whose name was Shimei, son of Gera, saw David and was accusing David. Said, God, torture you. You are a bloody man. You kill people. And he was just talking to David. And one of the servants of David said, Ho oh, king, can I go and kill this dog who has accusing my Lord? David said, No. Let him talk. Because maybe by his talking, God will have mercy upon me. David humbled himself. He humbled himself of repentance. He humbled himself. If you are in that situation, you are carrying a burden that your son has rise up against you and somebody is causing you out on top of that. But David did not revenge at that time. He said, Allow, he said God, maybe by this God we have mercy upon me. The, the midnight of our life is a time of repentance. It's a time that we need to humble ourselves. A time to see the face of God. It's a time to reassure God that we still trust Him. In the book of Job, chapter 19, verse 25, we know what Job went through. But of Job chapter 19, verse 25, we say, For I know my redeemer lives, that it shall stand at the last on the earth. He still believed that his redeemer lives. How many of us in the midnight of our time? We abuse God. We curse God. We don't need to do that. We need to praise God. We need to humble ourselves. We need to have a mercy from the Lord. So that mercy of God will be with us. That the grace of God will be sufficient. God will turn things around for us. Book of Isaiah chapter 15 verse 12 says, Those from among you shall be the old waste places. You shall rise up the foundation of many generations, and you shall be called the repairer of the beach and restorer of the street to dwell in. We are going to be a restorer. That God will restore all the wasteland. God will restore our wasteland. God will restore where we have been wounded. God will restore where we have affliction. That's what it's saying. You see, we have hope because Moses ran away from Egypt as a murderer. He came back to Pharaoh as deliverer. He delivered the people of Israel. Peter denied Jesus Christ three times, but it became the foundation of the church. That is our God. That is my God. That is your God. God is reassuring us today that when we repent, we see the glory of the Lord. Peter, who could not speak, who denied Jesus Christ twice, stood among the people in the book of Acts of Apostles, chapter 2, verse 36 to 41, and preached to the people, 3,000 households, Gave their life to God. 
whatever you are going through today is temporary. Whether I'm going through today is temporary. But we should not lose hope in the midnight of our time. We should not lose hope in the time of trouble. Job lost everything in the book of Job chapter 1. He lost everything, but he did not deny God. Even the Job chapter 2, his wife told him to cause God and die. He looked at his wife. He said, what a foolish woman. Is it not the same God that do good and do bad? He did not deny God. He said in the book of Job chapter 23, he said, you know my way, O oh Lord. When I pass through the tribulation, say, I will come out like gold. I pray for your life today. When you have passed through any tribulation you are going through, you will come out like gold. You will come out with victory. You will come out with testimony. You will come out with thanksgiving. I pray for you today. That midnight will not last. You will pass through it. Strong man will last over any trouble. The trouble cannot last. But the strong person will pass through the trouble and come out stronger. You will come out stronger from your midnight hour. You will come out stronger from that tribulation. You will come out stronger from any circumstances you are going through. From that affliction, you will come out stronger. From that overdose, you will come out stronger. From that tribulation, God will lift your head and come out stronger. Book of Job chapter 12, we were told that God blessed the latter days of Job than his beginning. Now the Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning. For he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camel, 1,000 yoke and oxen, and 1,000 female donkey. God will bless you than yesterday. He will make his way to shine upon you. You will be blessed. God will lift your head up. That midnight of yours today come to an end. By power in the blood of Jesus. I lift your head about those circumstances. You are a winner in the Lord. You are a winner. Because the book of Revelation chapter 3, from verse 20 down, said, those who overcome, because you are overcomer, you will overcome over that problem. You will overcome over any circumstances. God will put a new song into your mouth. You will praise God. You will have testimony. Because the book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 2, he said, by faith, the elders have good testimony. I pray for you and your family. You will have good testimony. Over your children, you will have good testimony. Over your health, we have good testimony. Over your family, you have good testimony. Over every aspect of your life, you will have good testimony. People will rejoice with you. They will rejoice with your family. It is well with you. More testimony to your life. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to invite you to what Prophet Isaiah said in the book of Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. It's a prince of peace. If you have not had an encounter with the prince of peace, this is time to give your life to our Lord Jesus Christ by confessing your sin and by accept Jesus Christ as the Lord and your Savior and you shall be saved. And then you need to be baptized and then receive Holy Spirit. Make sure you talk to your pastor and you'll be baptized. Thank you for listening to today's message. If you'd like to learn more about this ministry, please visit grministry.org or call us on plus one, 617 617-449-0646. To support this ministry, you can subscribe and follow our channel or give at grministry.org support. Stay blessed.